It's late June 2007, and the main dry dock at ANP's Heaven Yard is being prepared for a new arrival. With blocks set at the right specification and configuration, the workforce eagerly await the arrival of the Normand 7, a brand new ship recently completed and built in Norway for Solstad and chartered by Subsea 7. Subsea 7 is one of the world's leading subsea engineering and construction companies, and the Norman 7 will join their fleet as a flexible pipe-laying vessel. Once the work's been completed, the 130-metre vessel will depart for Brazil, where she'll complete a contract for laying flexible gas pipe at a depth of up to 2,000 metres. In the yard's hard-standing fabrication area, immediately next to the dry dock, stands the hardware, already in an advanced stage of fabrication and waiting to be craned into position on the decks of the Norman 7. These lifts will be well outside the scope of A&P's dockside cranes, which has meant a massive 1,200-tonne ALE crane has been erected and prepared for a number of super lifts that will take place over the following weeks. As usual in any major engineering project of this size, a tight schedule has to be met over a very short time frame in order to maximise the cost benefits to all the parties in this demanding commercial industry. The task for the team at A&P was to construct, install and commission all the pipe laying equipment in an aggressive timescale. In order to achieve this, the vessel had been carefully surveyed whilst under construction in Norway. After completing some preliminary sea trials, the Norman 7 is seen here entering the River Tyne. Less than 24 hours since Norman 7 birthed, and all the services are installed and the decks cleared ready for the first installation of the prefabricated modules. These consisted of the three MMP reel drive mechanisms designed to hold and store the reels of flexible pipe and feed them to the main pipe laying mechanism. This system can hold up to 10 9.2 metre diameter reels with the product weighing up to 250 tonnes each. However, after only a couple of days, the vessel had to be temporarily undocked to make way for the barges carrying the two SAS tensioners and traction winch from Holland. These are specialist pieces of equipment purpose-built for handling flexible pipe. With Norman 7 now back in the dry dock, the following day saw the first of the super lifts as Module 3 was fitted to the aft section of the deck. This houses the hydraulic power units to drive the tensioners and winches, and also the stern sheave and A-frame would be attached to this unit. 
Weighing 240 tonnes, this would be the first unit to be lifted by the 1200 tonne crane. Naturally, this would be a complex operation involving variable ballasting of the crane and staged lifting phases and delicate turning of the module prior to it being lowered to its final position. As the modules lowered to the deck, special locating brackets were welded to the deck to help with the precise positioning of the module. The next stage would be to get Module 2 ready for lifting. As this was the largest module, weighing in at over 340 tonnes, it required some careful planning and some major adjustments to the 1200 tonne crane as the unit had to be lifted clear of the deck-mounted 250-tonne crane jibs. This module would be the main platform for holding the two pipe tensioners manufactured by SAS of Holland. They weighed a massive 160 tonnes each and also had to be pre-fitted with all the main electrical cabling which added a considerable amount of weight. Critical project management had to be done for Module 2 to be moved smoothly into position as it was carefully lowered over and between the deck-mounted cranes, then slewed horizontally to clear the protrusions of Module 3 and the real storage sections. This became a very time-consuming stage of the project and had to be millimetre accurate. Once these two main modules were in position, considerable support and preparatory work was able to proceed. The tensioners and winch were craned into position. And a number of smaller modules were added before the A-frame could be carefully lowered with precision accuracy. It weighed in total more than 110 tonnes. The stern sheaves were the next item to be added, requiring some complicated slinging to position the awkwardly balanced units. With all the heavy lifting now complete, it was possible to undock Norman 7 to the nearby bead key. After a final inspection of the below waterline section of the hull, the sluice gates were opened and the dock flooded.
but the job was by no means over, and several weeks' work remained to be done, such as lifting in of the product reels, the commissioning of the hydraulic and electrical equipment, and fabrication work to make way for the final Module 4, the appropriately named bow tie, or to be precise, the removable gutter section which guides the product to the tensioners and winch. This can be handled by the ship's own deck cranes to allow replenishment of product reels. The 10th of October 2007 saw the final tidying up completed, and the gangway lifted away for the last time, as Norman Seven slipped her berth and finally made her way down the tide on the first stage of her long passage to the waters off the Brazilian coast. This truly was a testimony to A&P and Subsea Seven's project management teams and skilled subcontractors to complete such a complex operation in the projected timescale, on time and above all, safely.